My name is Dayton Young. I'm here from Fight for the Future, and we're going to be talking about the Earn It Act today. Um, I have a lot of guests with me today. We're going to be speaking to Senator Ron Wyden, uh, Ash Kazarian, Director of Civil Liberties at Tech Freedom, Mark Stanley, Director of Communications and Operations at Demand Progress, Kate Diadamo, Political Organizer at Hacking Hustling, Seth Hall, Political Activist with Tech Workers Coalition, and Jun Harada, Head of Growth and Communication at Signal. We're here today because uh, of the Earn It Act, which is a piece of legislation uh, written by Senators uh, Lindsey Graham and Richard Blumenthal. They say that this uh, bill is meant to protect child exploitation, uh, uh, protect children from being exploited online. Um, but privacy advocates, human rights advocates, tech workers, a lot of people are saying this is a sneak attack on encryption, that it threatens our free speech online, and there are a lot of problems with this bill. So people are very concerned this is going to cause a lot of damage if it's signed into law. We're going to hear from those people today. Uh, we have a petition that uh, 590,000 people have signed our open letter, have signed on to this petition, demanding that Congress reject the dangerous Earn It Act and uh, listen to our concerns to protect our free speech and our privacy online. We're going to be handing off that letter to Ron Wyden um, as soon as he's here. In the meantime, we're going to talk to all of these folks that I mentioned. We're going to chat about the Earned Act, and we're going to you know, learn a lot more about what it really does and how it threatens our freedom and safety online. So first up, I'd like to talk to uh, Ash Kazarian. You are the Director of Civil Liberties at Tech Freedom. Uh, Tech Freedom is a 501c3. That means that uh, your organization does not participate in lobbying efforts. So Ash is here to provide us with a legal analysis of the Earn It Act. Welcome, Ash. Thank you for having me. I'll try to keep this short, uh, but I want to give an overview of what's happening. The Earn It Act has been something that's been in the works for uh, almost a year now from Senator Graham's office. And we have multiple statements from Senator Graham saying that one of his targets is definitely encryption. So, you know, we have it on a record to begin with. Um, then if we look at just kind of the history of how these conversations and discussions were being had, the Attorney General Barr has also uh, many times stated that encryption, end-to-end -end encryption, is something they're after that it um, stops them from getting into places, the lowless spaces they want to get into. Uh, what they're obviously forgetting is that end-to-end -end encryption protects a lot of vulnerable population. It protects people all around the world, including in the United States, especially if you look at the reality that we live in right now, um, the Signal app has been downloaded so many times since the Black Lives Matter protest started. And there is a reason for that. People are seeking end-to-end -end encryption. They're seeking to protect themselves and their privacy. Now going into the Earn It Act and what it does and what it does not. Again, I'll try to keep this very simple. Um, there's one something to be said about Section 230, which the Earn It Act amends. Section 230, does not protect companies from liability for violating federal criminal law. That already exists. And already on the books in federal criminal law, we have um, you know, liability for spreading child pornography or uh, child abuse materials. So obviously what this bill is doing, using that cause, you know, that very obviously important for all of us cause of protecting the children is actually going after uh, our free speech, our privacy and after tech companies. Uh, so one thing I would want to mention uh, is the current version of the bill because there have been many different resurrections of this bill. But the one that we have right now that was voted out of a committee has the Leahy Amendment. Senator Leahy has tried to put kind of a patch on the encryption question. Unfortunately, we don't think it was enough for us to think that the threat to the encryption was gone. Um, there were multiple reasons for that. Number one is um, basically what the amendment does. It, it says that you cannot be liable for having an encrypted service as a tech, as a platform or as a website or service. But what that is, is that's a defense. So you would have to go to court to say, oh, no, no, no. Like here, here, here are we proving that encryption is actually not part of the reason you want to go after us. So that's number one. Consistent federal litigation is going to put a very big strain on all these providers. And some of them, especially the newer startups, for example, might not even want to use encryption, putting everyone's privacy and interests at risk. Number uh, two, which is, I think, very important, and what we have seen happen after SESTA-FOSTA was passed, 
was the fact that it's going to make investigating crimes against children, right, the spread of child um, abuse materials, way harder because the criminals, the people who should be found responsible, they're going to move to the dark web. We're, we already see that law enforcement is underfunded and they don't even do a good job of, you know, investigating these crimes and punishing those who are guilty. Moving this to the dark web is going to make it even harder to investigate, especially for departments who don't have enough um, money or technologists to understand what the dark web is. Whereas when you have, uh, you know, big platforms, small platforms who are uh, operating and collaborating with law enforcement like they are right now, it's a way easier task for them. But if you put the threat of liability on them, they're not going to do it. We saw that happen after SESTA and FOSTA passed. Huge chunks of internet, like websites were just shutting down big parts of it because they didn't want to deal or fight for this because they didn't want the liability and we understand why they wouldn't. They don't want to be associated with this. And one last thing I want to mention is um, the Leahy Amendment was used as this kind of get out of jail free card. Um, look, we figured out the encryption situation. We even pulled um, the Lawful Access to Encrypted Data Act that also was championed by Senator Graham. They're not even pushing that. Um, it's kind of like a bait and switch. Look, we're not going after encryption anymore, except earn it as it is. Um, and I think the logic of we keep amending this bill so it's better doesn't work because the substance is not better. That's, uh, that's a great explanation. Thank you very much, Ash. I just want to clarify one thing and, and ask you a follow up if you have a moment. Uh, I saw that uh, Tech Freedom has a statement. Uh, it's not from you, but it is from your organization that says, as introduced, the Earn It Act would actually make it harder to stop the spread of child sexual abuse materials while also limiting the First Amendment rights of adults to access lawful content and use secure services for private communications. Now, I think that's what you just covered. And if I understand what you're saying correctly, it's that what the Internet Act does is it removes legal protections for tech companies and websites and apps so that they can uh, be sued by people. And what that's going to result in doing is, is these tech companies are going to um, stop posting encrypted communications because of liability. They're going to uh, squelch free speech on their platform as well because they don't want to invite lawsuits and have to prove that they're not guilty uh, because that's costly and dangerous to their business. And as a result, then that's going to drive people who are doing difficult activities, illegal activities to the dark web, to different places where they're going to be harder for law enforcement to identify and harder for them to stop. Is that correct? Right. And um, I guess I just uh, assumed and jumped right into the Section 230 for those uh, who are joining us who don't know what Section 230 is and what we exactly are fighting for. Section 230 are, as Jeff, Professor Jeff Kossoff put, the 26 words that created the internet. Um, Section 230 uh, basically says that platforms are not liable for third party content. So let's say Twitter is not liable for what I say on Twitter. Um, and again, as I said in the beginning, Federal criminal laws are exempt from Section 230. Um, so these carve outs, just like we've seen with SESTA FOSTA, which was a bill that was uh, claiming to protect victims of sex trafficking. Um, and by the way, to this day, we have not seen a single prosecutor use that bill to go after you know, those who were guilty of this. Um, but at the same time, we've seen parts of internet be shut down and uh, other horrible consequences that I think my other panelists are gonna cover. Um, and the other thing is, even the threat of liability for a lot of um, platforms and websites, it creates this incentive to over moderate. And that also pushes, you know, the free speech needle definitely in the wrong direction. They over moderate, uh, they even use algorithms to just kind of take down content that they think would get them in trouble because no one wants that liability. No one wants that mark of, you know, being associated with such terrible crime. Well, thank you for that explanation. I think CDA 230 and SESTA Foster are things that we're going to talk about. And these issues get a little bit complicated because they rely on past precedent, other laws. There's a lot of things going on in the world that, that sometimes people have to understand to understand how these laws are going to work or how they're not going to work. Um, so thank you very much, Ash, for that wonderful explanation. Uh, moving on, I'd like to chat with Mark Stanley. Mark, you're the Director of Communications and Operations at Demand Progress. Um, Demand Progress signed on to an open letter uh, to the authors of the Earn It Act back in March. I'd like to read a passage from that letter that was very eye-opening to me. 
The Earn It Act ultimately would provide no significant benefit to law enforcement and would not be effective in addressing the crisis of production and distribution of child sexual abuse materials online. Instead, it would sacrifice the security and privacy of all Americans and leave them susceptible to online dangers. Um, I'm sure some people are sitting at home watching us talk right now and they're saying, I don't break the law. I don't have anything to worry about. I did a Reddit AMA recently and I had a lot of people say, hey, I have nothing to hide. I, I'm not doing anything wrong. Um, oh, hold on. We have uh, Senator Wyden. I'm going to pivot to him really quickly. Hello, is this Senator Wyden? It is. It was um, water torture getting in, but I have arrived. <laughs> well, I know you're very busy. Thank you so much for joining us. I understand you're actually in Congress right at this very moment for the vote on the National Defense Authorization Act. I know yeah. that's important. I yep. know your vote is important. Thank you for taking time to be with us. I'm happy to do so. Let me just check and see where we are on the time. Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, run whenever you have to. Uh, I just wanted to chat with you. We uh, at Fight for the Future have created an online uh, petition, an open letter, if you will. We've had almost 600,000 people who sign it. These people are opposed to the Earn It Act uh, that your colleagues, Senators Lindsey Graham and Richard Blumenthal wrote uh, to attempt to prevent child exploitation online. But there are many of us out here who think that this bill threatens our free speech. It threatens our privacy. It's going to threaten end and encryption. It's, uh, it's going to hurt marginalized people and minorities. So we're very concerned about this. We're concerned about child exploitation as well, but we think this bill uh, addresses it in the wrong way. I know you have a, a different piece of legislation called the Invest in Child Safety Act that you believe will help uh, reduce child exploitation online in a safer way and a more effective way. Can you please tell me about the Earn Act? Are you aware of it? Are you opposed to uh, it? Um, how do you think the Earned Act is going to affect those of us online? Well, for, first of all, I want to give a big thanks to Fight for the Future and to have 600,000 people uh, in effect uh, uh, make their digital voices unknown, saying no to a horrendous effort that would roll back free speech and, and privacy online is hugely important. So big thanks to Fight for the Future. Thank I you. want to start this to fight. I just want to start this by mentioning SESTA FOSTA, which was our last experience, some um, kind of proposed solution to sex trafficking has ended up doing nothing to protect victims or bring sex traffickers to justice. What SESTA FOSTA has done is produce a real policy flop driven sex, um, uh, sex, sex work to the uh, dark web and dark alleys and Statistics show that violence against sex workers has skyrocketed. I should have like five minutes. Can you take a look? Yeah. Take, I've got them. All right. Um, the most vulnerable members of society are the ones who paid the price while members of Congress declare victory. And Earn It takes a similar approach to this flawed SESTA FOSTA approach um, with respect um, to the issue of child sexual abuse materials. I think it will lead to a similar kind of result. And the horrendous idea of letting states regulate the internet, which is a very key part of Earn It Now, is going to create a tidal wave of uncertainty. It's going to produce years of lawsuits. And in my view, it's going to make it even harder to catch the monsters who create and spread vile material online. The original bill was quite um, different. It was centered around the idea of federal speech police led by Bill Barr, and then Senators Graham and Blumenthal had to rewrite the bill the night before the um, committee vote. And uh, now a broad coalition of civil society opposes the bill. They've asked for additional time to review the text, work with the committee, but the committee just bulldozed ahead and approved it. And now what we've got to do is get the word out that this new bill will do even less than the previous version to stop the spread of child sexual abuse material, target the monsters, and um, make sure that people understand that the amended Earn It Act magnifies the failures of SESTA, of FOSTA. And experts believe that SESTA-FOSTA hasn't done anything to help victims or stop sex trafficking, 
in effect, drove this activity to uh, the dark web, created collateral damage for marginalized communities and the speech of all Americans. And there's already a lawsuit challenging the constitutionality of SESTA-FOSTA on First Amendment uh, grounds. And uh, obviously, there's great concern in the Congress on the negative impacts this bill has had on marginalized um, groups. So you would think that authors of legislation after um, this, this bill would uh, learn from it and decide to take a different route. Instead, the authors of this bill doubled down, said, let's use the SESTA FOSTA approach and expand it to state civil and criminal laws. And by allowing any individual state to set laws for internet content, the bill creates enormous uncertainty, both for strong encryption and free speech online. And what's worse is the flood of state laws could potentially arise under the Earnest uh, Act and raise strong Fourth Amendment concerns, meaning that any um, evidence collected could be rendered admissible, inadmissible in court and accused uh, offenders could get off scot-free. That seems to me to be pretty bizarre, even by Washington, D.C. standards. So I introduced a bill that actually addresses the horrors of what is being done online in terms of abusing children. My bill, the Invest in Child Safety Act, drastically increases the number of prosecutors and agents who hunt down these vile child predators. It requires that a single person be personally responsible for the efforts and directs more than $5 billion in mandatory funding to the people who could actually make a difference in rooting out uh, this um, scourge. And by the way, Earn It Act uh, doesn't include a single dollar, not a dollar, for funding the important kind of efforts that I think are necessary, evidence-based programs that keep kids safe and are in desperate need of funding to do good uh, work. Basically, um, Earn It uh, pitches you know, to the galleries like SESTA FOSTA did and doesn't include a single dollar of funding for the real work that needs to be done. I'm going to have to run and vote, but I want to close by saying, once again, big thanks to Fight for the Future. You consistently are out there standing up against bad tech policy. And I think we all learned during the Pippa Sopa fight um, that uh, here in D.C., political change doesn't start in Washington and trickle down. It's just the opposite. It's um, grassroots up. And I just hope everybody will keep making their voice heard. And for all of us who care about free speech and privacy online, we need your help to keep a free and open Internet going um, forward. We've won before. I just mentioned Pippa Sopa when everybody thought those uh, odds were insurmountable. And the uh, fight for the future has uh, always been out there in the cause of a free and open Internet. And I just look forward to working with all of you. And I'm going to run and vote. But um, we'll catch up and continue this soon. OK. Thank you, Senator Wyden. Keep fighting for our rights uh, out there uh, on the floor in the Senate. Thank you very much for uh, being with Thanks us. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. That was fantastic. And uh, it was amazing to me to hear uh, Senator Wyden say uh, many of the same arguments that Ash just talked about in terms of uh, um, SESTA FOSTA, what a danger that was, and, uh, and what this, what Earn Act is actually going to be doing to drive predators underground when we should be investing more money and resources to find these predators and stop child sexual abuse uh, before it happens instead of kind of trying to punish online communities uh, where this is sometimes spread. So uh, before Senator uh, Wyden joined us, uh, I was talking to uh, Mark uh, Stanley from Demand Progress. So Mark, um, if you're still there and, uh, and willing to chat with me, I was reading this quote from a letter, an open letter that Demand Progress signed on to which made some of the same points that we just heard from uh, Senator Wyden, that the Earned Act ultimately would provide no significant benefit to law enforcement and would not be effective in addressing the crisis of production and distribution of child sexual abuse material online. Instead, it would sacrifice the security and privacy of all Americans that leave them susceptible to online dangers. So how is this gonna impact people who are, who are uh, just everyday Americans, ordinary folks, not doing anything bad or illegal online? How is it gonna threaten their free speech? How is it gonna affect their privacy? Can you talk to me about that? Yeah, absolutely, Dayton, and, and thanks so much. And, um, you know, my organization, Demand Progress, we've been at the forefront along with Fight for the Future and Senator Wyden 
on some of the biggest um, battles for internet freedom over the last decade. You know, Senator Wyden mentioned SOPA PIPA, uh, you know, net neutrality, mass surveillance. Um, but there really are few issues as important to internet freedom, you know, to our privacy, our free expression, our security as strong encryption. So, um, you know, of course, the fight to maintain strong encryption at this point is like really decades old. So to that end, I do want to thank uh, Senator Wyden, uh, Fight for the Future, Tech Freedom, everybody on this call for their continued work um, on this issue. So, of course, as has been said, um, uh, you know, everyone on this call, everyone fully supports the goal of stopping child exploitation online, of course. You know, as a new father, it's incredibly important to me. However, um, this bill, as Senator Wyden, as, um, as Ash said, would seriously endanger civil liberties and security while making it actually more difficult for law enforcement to protect children. Um, first, by jeopardizing encryption, uh, which of course ensures communications and online activity can't be you know, hacked um, and seen by third parties, this bill would make nearly every American, everyone across the board, less safe. Uh, by exposing people to cyber attacks and unwanted surveillance. Um, you know, encryption is absolutely vital to security on a number of fronts. That includes national security and infrastructure, economic security for the businesses that depend on it, and of course, our personal security. You know, so it helps our privacy. Uh, it's, it would helps, it's what helps ensure our privacy online and our confidentiality, and in turn, our, confident, our ability to be confident uh, that, that, you know, that we can freely express ourselves without undue um, surveillance or security breaches. So uh, the Earned Act would create a commission uh, headed by the Attorney General um, to ostensibly combat child exploitation, but this commission is extremely problematic. And um, it's problematic because it would be headed by, um, you know, Will Attorney General William Barr, and as Ash pointed out, it really is no secret uh, what uh, Attorney General Barr would do with the power that he would be given. Um, over the years, he's made it extremely cl uh, clear that he wants to severely weaken encryption by forcing technology companies to create what are called digital backdoors um, you know, that can be exploited by law enforcement to access personal communications. So if online service providers weren't to follow the guidelines set out by the DOJ and Attorney General Barr, which could in, uh, include eliminating encryption altogether, they could be stripped of the uh, Section 230 protections. And Section 230 is, of course, the law that um, you know our friends at Electronic Frontier Foundation have described as, quote, the most important law to protecting internet speech. So it's, it's extremely important uh, for free expression. Um, so really, you know, better training, better personnel to address child exploitation, that's what's needed. Um, if we eliminate encryption through the Earn It Act for certain services, it would simply push criminals to other communication options. Ash and Senator Wyden mentioned the dark web. Um, and it would do this while ensuring that ordinary citizens no longer enjoy the benefits of encryption. So going back to the statement you opened up with, Dade, and this is really sort of the, the foundation of the, the issue and the problem here. If you, if you eliminate encryption for a few or you try to, um, you're not going to see the benefits that you that you think you might, um, but everybody's going to suffer from it. Everybody's going to enjoy less less privacy, less security, less free speech. Um, this has been something that's been discussed and and verified over the years, going back to going back to the '90s and, and, and the crypto wars when this debate was raging um, decades ago. So ultimately, encryption and online privacy, I just want to make this point, they're really vital to free expression. It's, it's what gives ordinary people um, uh, that are accessing sensitive you know, health services or engaging in political organizing, uh, the confidence to know that their communications and their online activity are safe. So especially now when civil liberties are under attack by the government, when political organizing is on the rise and so crucial, we really need to um, maintain this online security and maintain encryption. It's really vital. So, uh, Dayton, uh, thank you. Thank you to everybody else. And thank you to Senator Wyden for joining today. And uh, really glad to be a part of this effort. Thank you very much, Mark. That's uh, very well said. And I think, um, you know, uh, Ash mentioned that there is an amendment to the Earned Act called the Leahy Amendment. Uh, which I believe is, uh, it specifically states that uh, the Earned Act isn't attacking encryption. But uh, what we've also discussed is that what the Earned Act does is it opens up these tech companies to lawsuits from 50 different states under 50 different sets of regulations. And if you have an encrypted service, 
they can sue you and you have to prove that your encryption isn't actually protecting those who are, um, you know, abusing children or spreading uh, child sexual abuse materials online. So it really does seem like it's just an end around to get to encryption that says, well, it's not about encryption, but, uh, but there's still many different ways for people to attack encrypted services uh, because of this law. And that, uh, that weakens privacy for all of us. So uh, next up, uh, Kate Diadamo, uh, Senator Wyden uh, mentioned uh, sex workers and uh, you are a political organizer at, a, at an organization called Hacking Hustling, which protects the rights and promotes rights for sex workers. Uh, so welcome, uh, thank you for having us on, uh, being here with us online today. Um, the bill's authors say that the Earn Act is supposed to stop check child sexual exploitation, um, but we've heard here that it may actually increase exploitation and it's not going to protect vulnerable people like sex workers. Can you please tell me, uh, uh, are sex workers going to be put at risk uh, by the Earn It Act? I've heard about SESTA FOSTA. How did that impact sex workers? Uh, so who's going to be hurt by, by the Earn It Act and how is the Earn It Act going to hurt these people? Sure. Um, and, you know, I know I, a lot of people think, you know, when, when we lose encryption, you know, I am a law abiding citizen. I, I uh, don't do anything that the government should be bothered by and therefore I'll be fine. And I guess I'm kind of here as uh, a representative of some of those criminals who are gonna get kicked off of platforms. Um, and so when we say that this is gonna disproportionately impact sex workers, it's not a guess. It's literally just an extension of a pattern that's been happening, yes, since Esther Foster, but actually for years. And so when we're talking about sex workers and the impact of being kicked off platforms, let's remember that we're overwhelmingly talking about women and femmes of color, LGBTQ folks, caregivers, parents, people with disabilities, um, people existing in poverty who are trying to make it under difficult circumstances. And that's who loses access to these platforms. And that's because, you know, what happens is when you lose encryption, but more broadly, when you expand the liability of platforms, and this is essentially what this is doing, it's expanding the liability of platforms for hosting specific content. And it's not just liability under um, child pornography laws. Under sesta Foster, it actually expanded criminal liability for just any association with commercial sex. And so you're looking at actually a host of different forms of liability that platforms are going to have to be navigating. And the collateral consequence of that is that sex workers are going to lose access to those platforms because it's just too high of a liability to keep those people on knowing that you're opening yourself up to a host of both criminal and civil charges by associating with the sex industry. And so after SESTA FOSTA, which is what that did very broadly expanded both criminal and civil liability. Um, as folks have mentioned, you know, platforms shut down, but also we saw um, a people being just kicked off, losing their accounts, losing access to things that a lot of other people enjoy. And what that meant is a decrease in safety and in health for sex workers. And you don't actually have to support the sex industry to understand that we shouldn't be putting people at higher risk for violence um, and economic instability. And so SESTA FOSTA passed, and I've been an organizer for sex workers for um, over a decade at this point, and the impact was immediate. And we have a lot of anecdotal data from community about what happened when people were kicked off those platforms. And it was immediately people went into street-based work. Um, people started uh, not being able to connect with clients, not being able to negotiate with clients for fear that that communication was going to get them flagged. And to enact harm reduction, to enact safety, you have to have multiple options, which means you have to have access to clients, you have to be able to control your circumstances, and you have to be able to negotiate freely. And when you increase liability, all of those things are going to be compromised. And so the impact of Earn It is that it's going to create a commission to expand this liability, and it's going to flag things that are going to disproportionately impact sex workers. And it's going to dis disproportionately cut off all forms of harm reduction that sex workers use to stay safe. And we did see increases in violence. We did see economic instability. We did see housing instability. And you know, it doesn't actually accomplish what it set out to do. And it actually is a bit of an insult, honestly, to people who experience violence to say that what we're going to do is not invest in prevention because we do have child abuse prevention programs that are severely underfunded. We have domestic violence programs that are geared towards prevention that are literally, these bills are sitting in Congress right now with the same funding levels that they had about 10 years ago. And they're not being reauthorized. 
those are not those amounts are not being increased and they're not even being brought to scale and so instead of investing in prevention instead of preventing violence what we're doing is we're having a bill we're, we're instead expanding liability for companies to just ignore it and push it under the rug and honestly as someone who comes from an anti-violence background it's an insult it's an insult to say that we're not we we are going to be complicit honestly in that violence by doing something that we know is actually going to ignore it because what happened after sesta fossa was not just that there was increases in all of this for sex workers there were decreases in referrals to victim service programs so even last year there was a decrease in the number of trafficking victims served um there's been a decrease in uh prosecutions and i i'm a, a non-carceral person. So um, prosecutions, I don't think are a good metric, but even by their metrics, they're failing and it's gotten worse. And so instead of actually dealing with these problems, which we could do, we literally have the bills written. And we even have not just bills about prevention of, of child abuse, prevention of intimate partner violence, permit, prevention of domestic violence. There is also a bill which says, we need to take stock and do research. It's called the Safe Sex Worker Study Act. It literally just says we should survey the land of what happened after sex workers lost access to understand the impact that it had on violence, on exploitation, on trafficking, and not a single person who has co-sponsored the Earn It Act is co-sponsoring that bill. And so it's pretty clear what, uh, what the priorities are, and none of them are actually about addressing violence at its root cause, which we could do, which we, we could very easily do. Um, and instead, it's taking this run around to try to say, well, if this happens to you, maybe you could sue. That, uh, that sounds very compelling. I know, I know uh, at the beginning you mentioned that you are representing uh, the criminals, but uh, my understanding too is a lot of sex work, particularly in this moment, is there's nothing illegal about it. I personally know people, and I have heard many more stories from uh, mostly women, but, but lots of people um, altogether, who have lost their jobs. They're struggling to make ends meet because of the pandemic and the shutdown. And they've turned to uh, digital sex work, OnlyFans accounts, uh, other things like that, uh, that are completely legal. But those sorts of activities that are helping people survive right now, sounds like would also be put at risk and they'd be criminalized uh, under, um, under the Earned Act. Is that correct? It is, and I mostly work with sex workers who uh, engage in a wide range of things. And honestly, consensually trading sex for money and engaging in, in consensual services shouldn't be criminalized in the first place. So that line of, of criminalization, I think, is absolutely um, for a different panel. Um, <laughs> but I, I am never going to throw um, my, my community and my folks under the bus. Oh, of course, of course. Um, I, I think it just it, it affects a broad number of people, and uh, and and I agree that we need uh, to champion the rights of everybody who, of all adults who are um, you know engaging in consensual activities. And this will uh, this will reduce our ability to do that. And it sounds like pushing some uh, a lot of the illegal activity under the rug doesn't just ignore violence, but actually kind of promotes and enables that violence as well. So uh, let's bring it out in the open. Let's get people the help they need. Let's uh, let's promote health and safety for everybody. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, no matter how you feel about the sex industry, no matter how you feel about criminalization of the sex industry, we shouldn't be doing things that make it more violent. I agree. There, there's no reason that pe people should be punished with more violence and illegal activities. That's craziness. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Seth Hall, you are a political activist at Tech Workers Coalition. Um, Tech Workers Coalition, I know you're based out of San Diego. You've been having some events about uh, the Earn It Act to kind of promote opposition to the Earn It Act. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what you do uh, as a tech worker, what other people in Tech Workers Coalition are, uh, are saying about this, and why your organization opposes this? Sure. Our involvement, especially for today, is because we've drafted a letter uh, that we're intending to send to Senator Kamala Harris. Uh, with uh, a, a wide variety of sponsors on that letter opposing Earn It and its sister effort, uh, SB 4051. And I'll make our comments brief here because Tech Workers Coalition at its core believes that technologists have sat by the sidelines for too long and that we are really refusing to sit idly by while government uh, 
institutes these kinds of harmful leg legislations like what we're seeing with Earn It and SB 4051 and what we saw with SESTA and FOSTA. These legislations, you know, they speak directly to many of our uh, areas of expertise, but also our lived experiences. And we're just not just going to sit by and, and watch it happen anymore. Uh, the, the insophisticated uh, approaches, the uninformed approaches to these kinds of le legislation are, are offensive to many of us. And, you know, we're, we're tired of them being passed without any outreach to our community whatsoever. So, you know, somebody like Senator Wyden should actually be commended because he has a very forward thinking office where he has placed technologists really at the center of his office so that he can get some of the best advice in, in uh, among uh, anybody in the Senate on the technology matters that he takes on. So that's a really, uh, that's, that's a really forward thinking way to run an office and, and we think more people should be doing that. But in the meantime, we're not gonna be sidelined. We're not gonna be divided anymore. Technologists are using these tools to organize. We're uh, organizing inside and outside of employers. And we're using our skills and our voices and our relationships uh, to take our message directly to the public like we're doing today. And you know, Fight for the Future is a great example of, of technologists who are uh, bringing their voices to the front line. So related to that, uh, Tech Workers Coalition here in San Diego has drafted a letter opposing EARNIT and 4051, and we'll be uh, sending that to Senator Kamala Harris uh, to try to make sure she gets her attention on this and, and voices her opposition. And the letter simply describes our opposition uh, to those bills based on the threats they pose to immigrant communities, to black and Muslim communities, to workers and journalists, all who use encrypted uh, communication technology and rely on, uh, techno on technology to be able to, to participate in society. Uh, in a normal way. So I'll keep my comments real brief. That's that's what our group is focused on doing. Uh, we're really uh, working on bringing the, the voices of tech workers to the forefront to really engage this battle. Well, I think that's a, a super important thing to be doing because, uh, you know, I work in the tech industry and before I worked at Fight for the Future, I was working for large for-profit organizations. Uh, I enjoyed the work I did and I, I was proud of the products that I created. But um, I don't believe that any tech worker should have to choose between, you know, like having a steady income and doing something that is ethical. And so uh, having people like you out there fighting for tech workers and saying, hey, we're the ones who are coding these. We depend on the insurance, the salary, you know, to get by. But, but we don't want to be doing this for these purposes. We don't want our work to be corrupted. We don't want our work to be used to hurt other people. Uh, that's very, very important. I also like what you said about uh, the unsophisticated uh, nature of the attacks and these laws. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of experts on this panel, you being one of them, uh, who, are, who are all making a lot of the very same points. And we didn't coordinate these speeches ahead of time. I did talk to you a, a, a lot of the, the guests here about what, what topics they wanted to discuss, but we're all reading the law. We're all coming to the same conclusions. We've all worked in the space and it seems like we're, we're just getting a lot of messages from people who are not thinking about it in the same way and uh, with the same depth that, uh, that, we're, that we're thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, you also mentioned the tools that people are using and, and the tools that tech workers are creating. I'd like to talk to somebody who is uh, with an organization that's making a lot of those tools. Uh, Jun Harada, you're the head of growth and communication at Signal. Uh, now, Signal is also a 501c3, or I believe Signal Foundation is a 501c3, and your mission is to develop open source privacy technology that protects free expression and enables secure global communication. Uh, to that degree, you've released the fantastic Signal app. It's an encrypted messaging app. I use it with my friends. I use it with my coworkers. Um, but how does encrypted messaging protect free expression? Uh, what other technologies are Signal uh, developing to promote these ideals? And how does the Earn It Act threaten your mission to promote uh, free expression online? Thanks, Dayton. Um, really happy to be here. Uh, definitely very much in line with the rest of the panelists uh, and Senator Wyden on the Earn It Act being uh, very much a threat to companies like Signal. 
Um, I think the best explanation I can give is, is the blog post uh, that we released back in April, um, which uh, was at the first onset of Earn It's uh, iteration. Um, we still feel very much uh, that the points we raised there are, are very relevant. Um, probably the, the most prominent point we, we mentioned was the Earn It Act, um, you know, so aggressively uh, comes after uh, technologies like us, software like us, that we would probably not be able to exist uh, in the US as we currently do. Um, and what we mean by that is uh, exactly what the other panelists have been saying, wherein you know, we, we look at uh, Signal and Signal's mission really as extending uh, a lot of the liberties and rights we have in our offline world to the online world. Um, you know, we all understand and, and the importance of, of privacy and private spaces in the offline space. As more of our lives move to the online space, we need to extend those same rights um, over into that space. And, and Signal really is, you know, designed to do that. Encryption is in effect, almost a side effect of that. Encryption is the tool that we use to help keep these spaces private. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of focus is on sort of the anti-encryption nature of uh, Earn It. Um, but really for us, we look at it as just an attack on free expression, an attack on uh, the privacies that we have in our lives and in, in every facet of our life, offline and online. Um, and so there really is not uh, a particularly clean way that the Earn It um, carves out space uh, for a company like us to exist. Um, you know, the Leahy Amendment that you mentioned and, and the other managers amendments, you know, are, are definitely you know, interesting efforts uh, to try to create that space um, for, for companies like ourselves, but uh, fall pretty drastically short um, in being able to give us any peace of mind. Um, you know, I think the, the kind of top line topic uh, for us in general is trying to understand, you know, what it means to, to service a, a large multitude of people. You know, we, we talked about activists and we talked about um, sort of private citizens in general who, who use Signal for a variety of different reasons. Um, and, and, and for us, the, the reasoning for using encrypted services, you know, definitely needs to move out of the, the idea that there's something to hide and there's a secret that you need to keep. Um, and in effect, it's, it's akin to having a conversation that you want to keep outside of other people's ears and as simple as that. And we all have conversations that, you know, we just don't feel are necessary for other people to necessarily hear or, or engage in. And, and that's effectively what uh, we're aiming to build with Signal. That's, that's uh, very helpful for me to understand. Thank you very much. And um, Seth mentioned that Tech Workers Coalition of San Diego is writing a letter to Kamala Harris um, do, do lawmakers reach out to Signal? Do lawmakers uh, reach out to companies and, and uh, like yours and organizations like yours to understand how these laws are going to impact the internet and commerce? I mean, I, I know that uh, um, you know, you, uh, Signal operates differently. It's a 501c3 than for-profit companies, but this is gonna impact apps. It's gonna impact Facebook Messenger. It's gonna impact you know, secure banking and other other things we use encrypted communications to protect doctors' appointments, things like this. Have lawmakers reached out to you? Are you in contact with these lawmakers? Are they listening to what people in the industry are saying? Um, we very rarely uh, have lawmakers reach out to us. Um, I think the the one time, probably the most poignant, is back in 2016 uh, when we were served uh, and forced to uh, give up. Um, information regarding a very specific uh, phone number that they had access to. Um, and you can go on our website and, and see what we ultimately um, had to deal with there. And, all, you know, for us, we have nothing. We don't know anything about um, our user base. We have no information that we necessarily store that would allow um, law enforcement any useful uh, recourse. Um, and so I think to that end, we generally um, have been, uh, you know, not considered and, and there are much, much larger organizations that are, uh, you know, I think taking up the, the space um, for that conversation. You know, for us at the end of the day, um, we feel that uh, I think that there is a potential novelty to encryption and there's, a, there's this idea that um, I think other panelists have mentioned, you know, that 
if there's nothing to hide, why do you need it? Um, but uh, you know, the thesis that that I think about often is uh, communicating uh, via signal or being via end-to-end -end encryption um, is quite normal when you think about sort of the properties of offline and online. Um, and any service that doesn't offer that level of privacy in terms of communication is quite strange and abnormal. Um, and, and so for us, you know, we definitely want to see the proliferation of encryption at large. Um, we think protecting people's communication and, and helping to ensure more private spaces can exist online um, is only a boon for everybody. Thank you for that. And I, I've heard that similar argument. I mentioned the Reddit uh, AMA I did. I've heard it talking to friends. I've heard it, uh, you know, I've read it on uh, popular blogs, people saying, if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. Uh, you know, wh why do you care if you have nothing to hide? Uh, and for me, I have a lot of, I have a lot of really good answers to that question. I do, I, I can answer that in a lot of different ways, but the most important uh, thing that resonates with me is that I don't have to have good answers to that question. I don't have to prove that I'm not guilty of something. You have to prove uh, that I'm suspected of doing something bad before you go rummaging through my backpack, uh, coming into my house, reading my emails. You know, the burden of proof is on the accuser. Uh, and so when people start uh, looking into what I'm doing and, and reading my emails and reading my text messages to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong, that, uh, that seems like it violates the Constitution to me. So thank you very much, Jun. Thank you, everybody else. Um, everybody's had a chance to speak. I see Chris Mills, Rodrigo, you're here um, to, uh, to cover this for the press. Do you have any questions for any of our panelists who are here? I'm all good, honestly. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Of course. Uh, the, uh, Ash is popping in once more. So Ash, uh, welcome back. If you had, did you, you have something else to add that you wanted to, uh, to, to comment here? Oops, I guess not. All right, well, uh, hey, thank you very much to all of our guests. Thank you to Senator Wyden and his office for all the work they're doing uh, to uh, oppose the Earn It Act and to promote the Invest in Child Safety Act. Thank you, Ash, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Kate, thank you, Seth, thank you, John for giving us all this great context. What I've heard here is a lot of very uh, well-informed people working uh, in the tech space, working to promote human rights, who care about this issue, who have very strong opinions about it. And, uh, and we're the constituents of the lawmakers who are working to pass this very dangerous uh, and disastrous law that's going to have a real negative impact on people's lives. Uh, these law many of these lawmakers aren't listening to us. Folks like Senator Ron Wyden are, and we're going to do our best to keep promoting our efforts, opposing the Earn It Act, and, uh, and making sure that we can protect free speech, free expression, and personal privacy online. So thank you, everybody. Have a great day, and uh, keep fighting. <laughs>